Hi there, Paul Williams, Keller Williams Realty. I uh, just wanted to put a, together a quick video for you to kind of see what we're seeing where the market's going to be going in 2017. So without further ado, let me step through it. It's, it's a bit long, so I'm going to try to rush through it a little bit. Um, but here we go. First and most importantly, and this is not a political statement. This is just facts. This is Gallup's U.S. Economic Confidence Index. Uh, and what they're saying is that Americans have viewed the economy more positively since the election in November than they did in the previous nine years. Both the current conditions and economic outlook components reached new highs last week. <clears throat> As a part of that, they asked what percentage, this is according to the National Association of Realtors, what percentage of Americans believe that home ownership is part of the American dream? As you can see, owners, 92%. But even 80% of non-owners, renters, believe that that's a part of the American dream. So where are we at? Where's buyer demand right now? Well, according to the Social Benefits of Home Ownership and Stable Housing, um, this was put out by the National Association of Realtors. And Lawrence Yun, who's the chief economist for NAR, uh, he said, owning a home embodies the promise of individual autonomy and is the aspiration of most American households. Ownership allows households to accumulate wealth and social status and is the basis for a number of positive social, economic, family, and civic outcomes. In other words, buying a home, owning a home is not simply a financial investment. There's a whole lot more to it. This is something I've been preaching for the last you know, 15 years. Don't buy a home just because it's a financial investment. There's more to it than that. This is a really interesting slide. This is put out by the Joint Center of Housing Studies. And what this is, is household growth. In other words, not, and not, not monetary growth, but just number of households. And as we can see, between 2005 and 2010, there were 680,000 additional households added in the United States. Between 2010 and 2015, that number rose to 890,000 or 0.89 million, million. It is projected to rise to 1,360,000. Why is this important? Those people need to live somewhere. They need to get out of the basement of their parents, move out and get started. Now, of those new households over the past year, 54% were not owner-occupied. In other words, they did not buy a home. Why is that? Well, that meant 46% did. But 69% of consumers fear that they don't have enough cash for the down payment. Well, according to the Aspiring Home Buyers Profile, again, this is put out by NAR, they asked people, they said, well, how much of a down payment do renters believe is necessary? And you can see that 39% believe that they have to have more than 20%. If you include in there the 26% that believed a 15 to 20%, you're getting it over, what, what is that, 65% of potential buyers think that they have to have at least 15% down in order to buy a home. That's holding a lot of people back. Now, how much of a down payment do owners, do, do current owners believe? That might be you. Well, numbers are almost the same, 30% over 20%. You add all these numbers together, you're at 87% think you have to have at least 10% down. The median down payment for the first-time buyers for three straight years has been 6%. And the median down payment for repeat buyers in three of the past four years has only been 14%. So you can see 75 80% of the people don't really understand you can get into a house with less than 20 percent down now clearly here in san diego it's harder to do because it's more expensive i get that but nevertheless this is on a on a national basis interest rates how are those going to play into it good question right now we're sitting right around 4.17 that was uh, uh february 2nd at that rate this is according to freddie mac so we're right around there, same thing, four point, this is our 30 year fixed. But these are the projections. By the second quarter, if you average all three of these, you got Fannie Mae, the Mortgage Bankers Association, and National Association of Realtors. This is their estimations of where we're going to be. So right now, by the second quarter, they're all anticipating that it's gonna go up, but it's not gonna go up dramatically. It's not gonna jump to 12%. It's gonna be up in the four, 4.3 to 4.6 range. 
and this is a Freddie Mac's uh, projection of what it will be by the fourth quarter of 2017 on a graphic level. So you can see right now we're right here. We had been right here. So back then it was 4%. Today we're at 4.3. What's really interesting, I love this graph. Um, this is by Freddie Mac. Um, this is the annual mortgage rate as it's gone over throughout the years. And again, this is nationwide. This line here is the historical average starting from 1972. This chart goes out to, to 2015. That's the historical average. This is the uh, historical average from 90 to 2015, 6.6%. Let's go back to the other slide. You know, oops, went, went the wrong way. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, let me uh, let me go back. I got to do this here. Okay, let's go back to this one. We're at 4.17% right now. I got one more to go. Sorry. 4.17%. Uh, no, oh, this is another another slide. Anyway, okay. So we're still way below what these historical averages have been. We were still selling homes even when they were at 16.5%. Now this is a, NAR put out this survey and they asked mortgage lenders, how do you think rising rates will impact demand for purchase mortgages? Now 16.7% thought that rising rates will weaken demand. Modest impact as strong employment or income growth will offset higher rates, 44%. What does that mean? Well, the economy is doing really well. That means people's jobs are more secure. They're getting raises. Things are getting better. They feel more confident that they can afford to do more. So that's what this is talking about. 16.7%, the same number as over here, felt it would have no impact. Um, and another 16.7%, no impact as there's not enough supply to fulfill current demand. Boy, is that true. We'll take a look at that in a, in a little bit. Now, Dr. Frank Northup, CoreLogic's chief economist, he said very low mortgage rates sparked demand. He's talking about over the last several years. And with inventories low, the result has been a pickup in home growth price, well, home price growth. With mortgage rates higher today and expected to rise even further in 2017, our national home price index is expected to slow to 4.7% year over year by November 2017. What does that mean? That means that they are expecting interest rates to go up, but they're expecting the appreciation to slow down, not become negative. They're not calling for prices to drop. They're saying that the rate of appreciation is going to slow. Now, here we have, remember that number before was on uh, the national level. So that when they're talking to 4.7%, they're talking as an average. In fact, that's right here. You can see it. Um, look at California. They're expecting to rise 8.6%. This one is a fantastic chart. This looks back now, you know, what, are, what is it they say about uh, stocks, uh, past performance is no guarantee, right? But look at this from May 1983 to July of 1984, interest rates shot up two points. Look at that. Okay, what happened to the real estate values during that same period? They went up 6.6%. Again, in March of 1987, they went from 9.04% to October of the same year, up another two and almost two and a quarter points, 11.26. What happened to the prices? They went up 5.2%. Here in October of 1993, they went from 6.83% to December of 94, they went up 9.2. So what, almost two, again, almost two and a quarter. Prices were, were increased 1.2%. And from April of 99, they went from 6.92 to May of 2000, they went to 8.52. Average prices went up 10.9%. So I know a lot of people are out there sitting on the fence saying, well, we're going to see a, an increase in interest rates, and that's going to mean that the prices are going to come down. They have to come down commensurate. Well, they didn't in the past. So, okay, they didn't, but now it's going to be different. Okay. Well, let's look at buyer traffic. This is the, the um, they do surveys. This was, again, done by NAR. Um, they send us out surveys all the time asking us, you know, how is buyer traffic when you're doing open houses? They also survey new home developments to see what the buyer traffic is. Look at California. It's, I believe that's strong. Strong, yeah, it's going to be strong. Um, I believe it's very strong, but okay, the only one they have is very strong is Washington. What I'm seeing here locally is very strong buyer demand. 
foot traffic. Here, here it is again. This is again according to NAR. This was just released, um, and they're looking back to January. You know, look at look at the the demand here. And again, this is nationwide. So we see it, we saw it early in the year, um, and then again at the end of the year. And I think there's an interesting trend that's been going on for the last several years, and I expect that to continue. This is just in the last 12 months. This is just taking that last chart and just showing you the last year again. It was up in February, March, and April, and then it sort of declined. We didn't see that here in San Diego, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Again, this is comparing 2016 to 2015. You can see our demand here, at least in December, was much greater, and again, nationally. Okay. Housing inventory, what's going on? Okay, when do most listings come on the market? The answer is everybody says you've got to put them on in the spring, the second quarter of each year. That's starting in April, May, and June. That's when all the houses are going to start flooding the market. And that's the best time to sell. Everybody says that. Okay, look, this is the months of inventory of homes for sale, again, on a national average. What this means is if, you, if we stopped putting any houses on the market, and we just sold those that were standing inventory, those that are already on the market. Nationally, it would take 3.6 months for us to sell all of those homes. Average, by the way, and what's considered a, a, a normal market, neither a buyer nor a seller market, is considered to be six months of inventory. Look at where it's been since January, four months, 4.4. It increased to 4.7. As homes came on the market in April and May, and then they dropped off. You can see there's just nothing on the market. But this is a nationwide, okay? I'm going to show you San Diego here in just a second. This is the percentage change in inventory by category, and what they're looking at is total number of homes, starter homes, trade-up homes, and premium homes. Well, almost everything in San Diego is a premium home nowadays. But this is the, the uh, 2016 fourth quarter compared to the fourth quarter of 2015. Look at the change in inventory. It's down in all categories. Um, and, and again, this is according to Trulia. This is a nationwide average. Seller traffic. So we just looked at the buyer traffic. What's seller traffic? Look at ours. California, weak. All right. I, I think we all know that. There's no inventories on the market or no homes on the market. Active residential listings uh, in the San Diego North Inland area. Now, this is, this is the, the North Inland, Inland Corridor, Rancho Penasquitas, Poway, uh, Rancho Bernardo, Scripps Ranch. Um, I believe we also include possibly Tierra Santa in this. Uh, and, but we're looking at solely single-family detached homes uh, as, as a way to, to, to gauge this. The blue line is 2014. 2015 is an orange. And this was 2016. This is the active number of listings in December of those years. Look at what it was in 2014. There were 533 homes on the market in January of two, or December of 2014. In December of last year, it dropped to 296. Not quite, just a little bit over half. But that means there were no homes available. This is important later on. Months of residential inventory. Remember that number that we just looked at that was saying, what was it, 4 and 3.6? Look at where we're at. We've been in the 1s and the 2s. That means if we stop putting houses on the market, we sell all the houses and 1.03 months in December. They're all gone. By the way, right now in Rancho Penasquitas, there's a grand total of 18 homes on the market, 27 in escrow. That's as of today's date, I think is uh, February 10th. It's, it's, it's insane right now. Okay, Months of inventory of homes for sale between 2011 and today. Again, this is a national put up by NAR. But look at, look at the numbers. Look at, look at how this is down. It was way over here in 2011, 2012, started dropping off, rose back up again. But look where we're at. There's just nothing available. This is nationwide. This is not just San Diego. This is nationwide. Here's that same uh, inventory for the last two years. Look at where we're at compared to where we were at last year. Last year was a very robust year. Again, this is nationwide according to NAR. But look where we were last year. Where are we going to be in 2017? getting worse. Um, this is the, the chart I was just referencing where it was saying 3.6. We're at 1.03. Okay. Housing supply year over year over the last 12 months, you can just see it's just down, 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 down. There's nothing available. 
Now, Jonathan Smoke, the chief economist of Realtor.com, um, I guess he's new, maybe he un, um, I don't know, anyway. In most markets, most years, the optimal time to list is in the spring so that the maximum number of potential buyers view the home. This year, the conventional wisdom of buying and selling may need to change. Inventory levels at the beginning of 2017 are at multi-year lows. Sellers now face very little competition. And that's important depending on what you're looking for and looking to do. Okay? Again, existing home sales. So the inventory has been low, and yet the sales have been high. Okay? And here it is just since January of 2014. Look at all the, the number of sales here. This is nationwide again. Now, this is really interesting here. This is, again, our area. Again, 2014, 15, and 16. Look at where the, the, I put this arrow on here because look at where the buyers came into the market. This is the average days on the market. So while we were averaging around 50-ish in January and February, in March it suddenly dropped last year to 30. Okay, Didn't drop that precipitously the previous two years, but it did drop. We did see that drop. So what does that tell us? These are homes that uh, are going into escrow in March. That means the buyers have been coming in around here to buy these homes. Because the average market time right now, this is saying 30 days, but realistically, it's, it's not even that. So this is where the buyers are really coming into the market, and they're main, maintaining strong. They're, they're staying throughout June. But now look what's been happening over the last three years. We all of a sudden see uh, days on the market increasing. And I have reasons that I've, I've, for that, but I don't want to go into that right now. This I put in here because if you remember that slide earlier and what I just showed you, this was during a time where the interest rates were rising. They had risen from 3.5 to about 4.3%. All of that activity that I was just describing was occurring while interest rates were on the rise. They had risen almost a full percentage point, and yet houses still were selling. And here it is right here. Total number of homes sold. And again, same thing. You can see all the houses that sold, and then they start dropping off in June, July. July is when they start tapering off, and we saw a little bit of a blip in November. But look at the total number of sales. Look at uh, right here in June, we were right on pace with 2015. But ever since then, we've been outstripping it until we get to December. Why did December drop to 288 from 320 and 348 the year before? It was because people decided they didn't want to buy homes anymore? Not at all. It was because there was no inventory. There was nothing on the market for them to buy. Now, average sales price of homes during that same period of time, you can see, again, buyers start coming into the market in March. We saw the interest rate or the uh, prices last year rose up, but then they started flatlining again. And we saw this the last three, four years. It kept doing this. It kept flatlining. In 2014, we saw a bump, and that happened in September-ish. Uh, last year, it happened in October. But those are almost aberrations, if you will, more than anything else. But they tend to flatline. And you know, people always talk about November and December, terrible times to put their homes on the market. Look what happened to pricing. Okay? You have less homes on the market, less competition. So people that you know, I've put their homes on the market in the last couple of months, I'm getting multiple offers on them still. Just sold one in uh, Torrey Highlands, closed escrow a week and a half ago. Four offers, and in fact, it was really funny because the the seller didn't think he could get 870 thousand for it. He didn't think he'd get 850. I told him I felt we could get 870. Uh, first offer came in at 865, and he just took it. <laughs> we had three other offers come in, but he was like, you know, I appreciate them stepping up. I'm just going to take it. I'm good with that. Um, we could have gotten him a little bit more if he'd wanted to negotiate. He was a real nice guy. He just, you know, I don't need to do that. Um, existing homes sales, and this is by region. So you can see the number of sales have dropped in the West by 1.6% year over year. Again, no inventory. Uh, existing home sales. Okay, so again, this is on a national. This is put out by Freddie Mac. And you can see that they're very robust. New home sales have been robust. I went into, uh, in fact, I got those stats. Oh, they're not right there. I'm sorry. Anyway, I, I ran. I went into a new home developments over in uh, uh, Forest Ranch, Del Sur area, 
and uh, they had their numbers where they 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 came out with like 45 homes to sell, and in three months they were down to like seven. It, it was just crazy. And all I think I visited you know, two, three, four. It's probably four different developments, and all of them were that way. They're just they're selling them like that. It's crazy. What's home prices? What, what are they going to do, Paul? What's going to happen? Well, according to the Case Shiller year-over-year price changes, this is a 20-city composite. You can see these are all increases year over year, okay, month. So in 2016 in November, it raised, uh, what is that, 5.3% over the previous year. So you can see Case Schiller is saying, yeah, we're, we're still seeing price increases. Not a shock. Okay, so what does this all mean? Sales and prices will likely to continue to climb. If you're a buyer, the time to buy was three years ago, to be honest with you. Continue to wait, you're likely to see prices continue on their upward trend. This is the forecasted year-over-year -year percentage change in uh, the United States. Again, we looked at this graph earlier, 8.6% in California. If you're a seller looking to move upward, you're looking to sell your three-bedroom and buy a four-bedroom, you want to do it sooner rather than later. Don't think it's a good idea to wait until June or even May get it on the market literally now. We've got tremendous buyers built up. The reason I say that is when you sell that home today, we can get you into buying the other one in 30, 60, 90 days. There's ways we can do that. But if you end up waiting and now you're buying later on in the year, number one, interest rates might be very well likely going up. And you're going to have more buyers out there looking for the same number of homes as you are. You really want to have cash in the bank and be able to go out and buy your next home. So if you're looking to move up, you want to sell now, buy your replacement home in 60 days roughly. Give me a call at 858-376-7653, shameless plug, and I can explain to you how, how we do that. Okay, now if you're a seller looking to move down, you're moving from that five-bedroom with all the kids and you're going to downsize, or you're looking to move out of San Diego, cash out and, and go retire in the mountains. <clears throat> I would I would look to be going on the market probably in March, maybe April, again, taking advantage of that pent-up demand. We don't know exactly. We can forecast all we want, but nobody knows exactly what's going to happen. I'd, I'd jump while the, the irons are still hot. I think if you wait until, you know, May or June, you'd probably be okay. Um Again, that's if you're going to just cash out and not, not buy something, a replacement. If you're going to buy a replacement and it's more expensive, do it sooner. If it's cheaper, you, you can probably wait a little bit. These are just all of my resources. I just wanted to share these with you. This is uh, where everything came from. Um, and again, if you're thinking about buying or selling any real estate, I'd love to have you call Paul. My number is 858-376-7653, or if I could just... Uh, you know, answer any questions for you. 858-376-7653. Take care and have a terrific new year.